Hey guys, this is Elliot the iPad Pro, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up your iPad for school, work, and coding. So, I'm a computer scientist, and I've been using the iPad as my main device for school and programming for over a year now. And in that time, I've learned how to set it up so that I'm really efficient on the iPad. By the way, my YouTube channel teaches people how to code Python on an iPad, just like what you see right here. So, if you're interested, definitely check that out. So if you're watching this, you probably just got an iPad, and congratulations, you got everything you need for school and work. But when you get an iPad, it should not look like this. Your iPad should really look like this. The pencil is really a requirement for school, and if you plan to do programming or write any type of papers, then you really need the keyboard. I know that the keyboard and the pencil cost money, but it's completely worth it. It really changes what you're able to do on the iPad. As of 2018, all the iPads support the Apple Pencil, and you don't need to have a fancy iPad Pro to use a keyboard. For the regular iPads, you can use a Bluetooth keyboard. There's some really high quality keyboards that you can find on Amazon. So I know you're probably wondering what apps I got and how I use them, but before you download any apps, the first thing you should do is set up iCloud. So iCloud is absolutely amazing. If you have any other Apple products, then everything between your devices will be synced. It makes all of your devices feel like one computer. For instance, right here you can see my MacBook Pro's desktop. You can also see what's in the documents folder. Also, let's say you took a photo with your phone, but then you want to edit it on your iPad with your pencil. Well, if you have iCloud, then right after you took that photo with your phone, you'll find it on your iPad. Now to set up iCloud, you go to your settings, and then on the left you'll see your profile. From there, you'll click iCloud. Now this is where you set up iCloud. So Apple has a really good tutorial about how to set up iCloud, and I'll put a link to this in the description of this video. Okay, so that's iCloud. Now let's get to the actual apps. So probably your first question is, what apps do you use for all your daily work, like writing emails, writing papers, making PowerPoint presentations? And really, the thing I usually use is Apple's apps. At first, I was a little skeptical about Apple's version of Microsoft Word, or Apple's version of PowerPoint. But the thing is, these apps work really well on an iPad, because they were designed to work on an iPad. And once you get used to them, you'll just fall in love with these apps. But the thing is, not everybody has an Apple computer. So if you ever plan to work with other people at your job or at school, then you need to download the Microsoft version of these apps, and you need to download the Google version of these apps. So as you can see, I found the best way to organize these main apps is by company. So I put all of the Apple apps that already come pre-downloaded onto your iPad in the Apple folder. Then I put all the Microsoft apps in the Microsoft folder. Finally, I put all the Google apps inside the Google folder. Now to download the Microsoft and Google apps, you can go to the Apple App Store, and then you can click Search. From there, you can type in Microsoft or Google, and then you'll find the apps that you want to download. One Microsoft app that's really useful, but that you may have not heard before, is called Office Lens. And you can use this app to scan books into your iPad using your iPad camera. For Google, one of the less well-known but still really useful apps is Google Translate. Also, Google Earth is really fun if you haven't seen it before. Now, in general, I put all my apps in one of three places. A lot of my apps are inside folders but then I put the apps I use the most on their own page. Finally, some of the apps are in the dock at the bottom of the screen. Now the apps in the dock are extra important, and that's not just because I use them a lot. These are the apps that can be used for multitasking. So to give you an example, let's say I'm working on a PowerPoint presentation and I want to add an image. Well, to do that, I can open up my Photos app, and then I can just drag the photo I want into the PowerPoint presentation and resize it from there. As another great example, let's say that I'm looking at an application that I coded up in a web browser. Well, I can also pull up the source code for that application in another web browser, and then I can see how the source code relates to the part of the application that I'm looking at. 
Apple only allows you to put 15 applications inside of your dock, so you have to think very carefully about which applications you want to put there. So for example, even though the settings app is something that I use all the time, I don't put it inside of the dock because it's not an application that allows for multitasking. All right, I showed you the three places where I put apps, inside the main page, inside the dock, and inside the folders. Now let's take a look at some of the applications that make the iPad so awesome. Now starting from the top of the main page, the first app you'll see that's not automatically on your iPad is Google Maps. So the iPad does come with Apple Maps installed on it, but I don't know anybody who uses Apple Maps. The last time I tried that app, it wasn't that good, so you should definitely install Google Maps. The next app you'll see on my iPad is Surfline, which as a surfer is important because you always want to know what the forecast is before you go out. The Measure app is a new app from Apple that's really cool and I find super useful. So what it does is it allows you to measure objects using just the screen of your iPad. For instance, it will say that my 15 inch MacBook Pro is 14 and a half inches, so pretty close. Next you'll notice I have Firefox on my iPad, but I also have Safari, Microsoft Edge, and Google Chrome. The reason why I have so many web browsers is because I do cloud computing, so all of my programming happens inside web browsers. And like before, you saw that I can use multiple web browsers for multitasking. The next app, Procreate, is an absolutely amazing app for drawing. Here you can see a drawing I did of my girlfriend. If you want to get the most out of your Apple Pencil, then definitely get this app. This app is also extremely good for photo editing as well. Now, See Anatomy is a must-have app for anybody who does medicine or who enjoys learning about human anatomy. Not only does it have extremely detailed descriptions about any part of the body, it also even has animations about how muscles and tendons work. Finally, I use Google Calendar to build my schedule. It's also a really convenient way to schedule your classes in college. Although I've heard really good things about Apple's calendar app as well. Okay, that's it for the main page, so now let's talk about the doc. Now, you'll notice that I use Apple Mail for all of my emails. I used to use the Gmail app for about six months, but there's some features like attaching files that's hard to do, so I switched over to Apple Mail and it works great. Setting up your mailbox is actually really easy to do. Just go to settings and then scroll down until you see passwords and accounts. Then under accounts, click add account. From here, you can add your Google or Yahoo or AOL account. Now, when I'm writing a new email, I sometimes like to use links and colors in my email. And I found that the easiest way to do that is to first write the email in pages and then to select all my text and move it over to mail. Now, this next app is called Termius, and if you're a computer scientist, then you have to download this app. So Termius allows you to access a computer anywhere in the world using SSH. For instance, right now we're inside one of the computers that I have running on Google Cloud. Another app that's really great for programmers is Google Keep. So this is Google's version of Apple Notes, and I find that it's really useful for storing links to different topics in computer science. Now, the next app is Apple Notes. I find this app to be really useful for creating a daily to-do list. Your to-do list will also be synced to your phone. Also, if you write a lot of math, then the sketch boxes inside Apple Notes are the place where you have the least latency and where writing feels the most natural. Now, as a math student, you're gonna be writing thousands of pages of math. So it's really important to find an app where writing feels natural. Even though Apple Notes might feel the best when you're writing, it's still not the app I usually use, and that's because it doesn't have the features that Apple Pages or another app called PDF Expert has. For instance, a really cool feature that you can do in Apple Pages and in PDF Expert is select a line of math that you're working on and then paste it down below. This is really great when you want to continue a math proof that you're working on. All right, now it's time to talk about my favorite app on the iPad and that's PDF Expert. If you're a student, then you have to have this app. PDF Expert has a lot of great features. 
For instance, you can do highlighting faster than how you can do it with a highlighter. This app can also read text out loud to you. Homologous recombination can rescue broken DNA replication. I find this to be a really useful feature when I'm learning new material. Also, let's say you finish reading a chapter and you want to do the quiz at the end. Well, with PDF Expert, you can actually add a new page to your PDF and then you can start working on the quiz right from there. You can even add images from other parts of the chapter. Finally, PDF Expert gives you a way to search through all the notes that you've taken. For instance, you can search through your highlights based on what color they are. With PDF Expert, it's actually really easy to organize all of your material by topic. So this is an amazing app, but the one catch is that it only works for PDF documents. You can usually find free PDFs online for most books about math, computer science, statistics, and advanced physics. But it's really hard to find PDFs about biology, chemistry, and medicine. For these subjects, you can almost always find a digital copy of the book that you're looking for on Amazon. But once you download the book off of Amazon, you then have to read it in Kindle. And Kindle might be okay for literature, but it's a terrible application for trying to do real studying. So what I do instead of reading Kindle is I choose which chapter I'm going to read, and then I take a screenshot of every single page in that chapter. When I'm finished, I then open up another app called Scanner Pro, and I can use that to turn those pictures into a PDF document. To do this, I select all of the photos from the chapter, and then I turn those into a PDF. When you have the PDF, click Actions and then Recognize Document. This makes it so that you can highlight and copy text from the PDF. Now doing this might seem tedious, but you're going to be spending months reading these books and you're going to keep these notes for the rest of your life. So I really recommend that you use PDF Expert. Alright, that's it for the doc. Now there's just a few more last apps to cover inside my folders. Let's take a look at my utilities. If you're a computer scientist, you're going to need a VPN for testing web apps. A VPN is also necessary if you want to download movies illegally. NordVPN is probably the world's most reliable VPN, and they have an app for iPad. Adblock is awesome if you don't want ads in Safari, and Juno is great for coding on Jupyter. I'll cover Juno in another video. One cool thing is that I actually do all of my stock trading on my iPad. TD Ameritrade has some really good apps for that. If you're into hiking, All Trails is great. It shows you different hiking routes and their difficulty. If you look into my Messenger apps, you'll notice that I don't have WhatsApp. It's annoying, but Apple doesn't support WhatsApp. And finally, yes, I am a big fan of Minecraft. Alright, that covers my iPad setup. So what do you guys think? Do you have questions? Did I leave any apps out? If so, write a comment. If you enjoyed the video, definitely hit like and subscribe. Alright, this is Elliot the iPad Pro. See you guys next video.